on the Chris Smith Show Open House. Brought to you by Domain. With Sydney listings added daily, find your next home on the Domain app. 16 minutes to midday. Now we've passed the halfway mark of the spring property market for this year. How quick did that part of spring go? And there's some very interesting trends emerging, some that won't suit a lot of people, some that may. The traditional spring surge it is just not happening. So to find out where the market's up to and how long this kind of downturn will continue, we always try and drag in an expert, and he is Peter O'Malley of Harris Partners to get an update. Peter, welcome to the studio. Thank you, Chris. Good morning. Aren't you busy? Aren't you out there uh, selling houses and talking to clients? What's going on? What are you doing here? Yeah, that's it indeed. I'll be back out there soon enough. Uh, look, it is it is good out there. It's improved probably in the last few weeks. We've actually seen auction clearance rates trend up a little bit, Chris. Okay. And uh, that's a function of a lack of stock coming to market from a seasonal perspective. And it's also a function of a more uh, motivated or uh, market-aligned vendor coming to market. So so we are seeing buyers and sellers uh, come together a little bit smoother at the moment than what we saw last quarter. Year because to- last quarter they were coming off that big surge that lasted through the pandemic, thinking they can still get the same prices, right? Correct. And I've just looked at some core logic numbers here. Last quarter, the Sydney housing market dropped 7% for the quarter. Uh-huh. Annualised, that would be disastrous. So there was going to always be a point where the market stabilised for a period. I think the market also took comfort out of the RBA rising raising interest rates by 0.25% in October as opposed to 0.5%. That's a message from the RBA that they're listening to the marketplace. Now, the number one risk in the property market is still the COVID-era home loans that were at 2% and the people will need to refinance at current mortgage rates from next year on. That's going to create havoc on a lot of household budgets. So that's something that will still need to be dealt with next year. But here and now at the moment, vendors are getting some respite. So over the la- from the last quarter into this part of spring, you've had the unenviable job of trying to get vendors to be more real, right? So they've rung you and said, yeah. we should be able to get X for that. No, 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 no. I would be a little bit more on the side of X, of Y. And they go, no, 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 we can get X for this. Yeah, the most galling thing for a vendor to have to accept is yeah. an inferior house having sold for more a few months yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're looking at that house saying, but ours is clearly better. Different time. Different time, and that's what it comes back different to. Different circumstances, different price of money as well. Correct. That's that's playing right through the market at the moment. Yeah, and so you'd be very interested to know what's going on with interest rates from here on in, but if they've gone 0.25 last time as they did and everyone was fearing 0.5, we shouldn't expect much more than 0.25 at worst. I'd be surprised if they went by more than 0.25 in November, Chris. Yeah. And then hopefully they don't go in December at all and they give some relief. I think the RBA are very conscious that they need to have a look at how the economy performs as people need to refinance from COVID-era home loans to current mortgage rates in 2023. So stock levels at the moment, you're saying they're low? Yes. um, Ourselves and I think most agents are fighting for stock at the moment because it is unusually low for spring. Um, But equally so, the agents are saying to the vendors, if you're not aligned with the current market, there's very few vendors that are beating the market at the moment Mm -hmm. and you're better off not listing than coming on overpriced listing and languishing. 131873 is the telephone number if you want to talk directly to Peter O'Malley and maybe there's property that you're thinking of selling and you wonder whether you should move or not or you're thinking of buying and you've got something in mind. Maybe it's a unit, maybe it's a, a residential house. Give us a call on 131873. Peter O'Malley from Harris Partners. Um, what are auction? You mentioned auction clearance rates getting a little bit of a spike. How will the second half of spring go, do you think, or what are you hoping for? It depends if there's another bounce in stock levels as we head toward Christmas. So anyone that sells today, for example, can still settle the sale before Christmas. Yeah. From about two weeks' time, anyone that sells will settle the sale after and Christmas. And that, that is a big consideration. People like to wrap things up before the end of the year. They do. And, and, and the, in the second half of spring, the listings that tend to come to market, Chris, it might sound funny, is people that have had kids doing HSC. And once the HSC has finished and they look at the 2023 outlook, 
they will look to sell quickly before spring. So I've got a number oh, of clients, a number of clients that wouldn't put the house on the market, understandably, while the while the children or the kids are uh, are doing HSC, but they've got every intention of selling before Christmas. Right. So they don't want to, to disrupt study, and they wait until that's all over. Correct. And and then combined with the stabilisation for the time being in the market, that in itself will entice some vendors back into the market that have sat on the sidelines. When you're talking about property prices falling 7% in a quarter, that spooks a lot of people. Mm. And again, the RBA would be conscious of this and that would have all fed into their 0.25% rate increase in October. Take us to the top end of the market, the eastern suburbs, the lower North Shore, etc. I'm still finding in newspapers, you know, oh, this went over reserve, etc. But it's just not a reflection of the rest of the metro area. But... They're holding firm, are they? Uh, they're, they're doing a lot better than the bottom to the middle to the bottom half of the market. Absolutely, so that's a really good read. Uh, the top end of the market doesn't seem to be as interest rate sensitive, unsurprisingly, as the middle to bottom half. Uh, so yes, there would be people listening to this that are buying and they're not computing with what I'm saying about a seven percent drop in prices last quarter um, because they're not seeing it on the ground in in some of those upper end suburbs. But across the board, that's how it's playing out. One of my older kids is looking at uh, getting an apartment, and boy, have we spent a lot of time filling out forms, submitting those forms, and getting nothing back. Rental market's fierce, Chris, um, and you need to get very close to the rental agent and get your uh, application to the top of the pile um, because... So you're suggesting doing a lot more than just filling out the form and emailing it? The property manager's coming into three or four uh, applications each week. Right. Yeah. And so they go to the vendor and say, here are the applications. So you've got competition, haven't you? Competition. So the, the buyer competition that existed last year in the for sale market, that same fierce competition is now playing out in the rental market. A lot of talk about the rental market during the week and the rental prices are factored into the CPI. So rents are going up. They've recovered their to their pre-COVID levels, oh. but we're going, we're going to see them rise very strongly through 2023, which will feed into inflation numbers. Okay, so if you're in the market to get a rental property, uh, as a tenant, you might want to lock in for 12 months, not six. Uh, absolutely. And we're getting a lot of tenants when we ask them to pay the current market rent in existing rental properties. They say, no, I'm not going to pay that. I'll leave. And we say, if you choose to leave, we respect your decision. But if you choose to stay, this is the new rental rate. And then they come back to us a week later and say, I'm going to stay. I've looked at the market. So and people always blame the bad real estate agent, but this is the vendor in your ear, right? Oh, absolutely. If we, if uh, all real estate agents, if they're not delivering market price to their clients, quite simply, they'll get fired. Yeah. And and the vendors themselves are, are wearing higher costs through mortgages, increased rates, mm. increased maintenance costs, because mm. handymen are you know eighty dollars, a hundred dollars an hour now. Yeah. Um, the days of calling out someone for a fifty dollar call out fee are long gone. So vendors, uh, landlords are taking on higher costs, and that's going to flow right through the economy. So what we're seeing is the inflation genie is out of the bottle. At some stage, the RBA are going to have to say, do we keep beating up on inflation um, at the detriment of the economy or do we put the economy um, as a higher priority than inflation in the short term? What about the rural market? And I'm, you didn't prepare for this. And I didn't, didn't have a question that I designed to ask you today. But Bruce, one of our listeners, has sent me a message saying property prices are not coming down in Kiama or Lura. That's probably because they are hot spots. There are still... Like the rural market went berserk during pan- the pandemic as, as city people decided I need a bolt hole in the bush to get away from these silly lockdowns, to get away from the gridlock. I'm over the city and this is when it went off its brain. What's happening in the country at the moment? Uh, look, they are hot spots, as uh, as Bruce has said there. Kiama, Lura appeal to baby boomers that are leaving the city. Mm-hmm. So whilst they might be paying a very high price in those regional towns, they still have a lot of change left over from se- selling their city property, if you like. Okay. So what city siders have done to rural towns like Kiama and uh, Lura during COVID is they've imported inflation into the town because those people that have gone to wor- work in Kiama but still have a job paying them a Sydney wage back in Sydney is that they have put the squeeze on the locals, if you like. And a lot of locals in the regional towns are aggrieved. It's what's happened in the last three years. Are they? But it's just a spillover effect of the uh, of the pandemic. Yeah, they, because they've become popular uh, again. Now, Mudgee is another town that's gone berserk over the last three-year period. Yes. So I spoke to a real estate agent in Goulburn this week, a good friend Barry McEntee. He's not seeing anything like I'm seeing here in Sydney at the moment. Uh-huh. You know, he's, he's, Things are strong. 
Uh, they're holding. He didn't say they were rising, but prices are holding, where clearly, as we've discussed today, they've actively fallen aggressively in Sydney year to date. What's your gut feeling about 2023? Uh, I think um, the regions will underperform in 2023, Chris. Um, I've got a client who's looking at buying a beach house up on the central coast, and my advice to that person was you can afford to wait 12 months. The reason I say that is that there's a lot of secondary homes in, in these locations as well, and as interest rates rise and people need to consolidate, they're more likely to sell the secondary property, the coastal property, the regional uh, property than their primary residence. So uh, baby boomers leaving the city and heading to these hotspots will put a floor under it. But I think uh, next year, regional centres will underperform the city. Okay. Underperform the city. All right. That's really interesting. Mate, thank you very much for coming in. I'll let you get back to do what you do best. And uh We'll talk again before the end of the year. Look forward to it. Thanks, Chris. Good on you, mate. From Harris Partners, Peter O'Malley.